Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, Amy. Yes, doing very well. Uh, just uh, just had morning prayer uh, in the drizzle, or well, not in the drizzle, but looking at the drizzle uh, outside. So uh, the weather's not great, but uh, but no, that's um, morning prayer is great. We had a lot, lots of people on this morning, and I think that just shows you, I think the need actually for people that, to to engage in prayer. Uh, lots of lots of things to pray for as well. So um, so yeah, so so great morning so far. Long one. I was up early. Um, as you, you and I, you and I know, our, our my insomnia uh, kicks in now and again. So, uh, so uh, anyway, so been up a while. Uh, what about you, Amy? How's your day so far? Yeah, it's been okay so far. I think uh, it was cold and wet this morning. I think there's always a, a struggle. I saw um, a, uh, I can't remember on Instagram or a tweet yesterday that was reflecting that by the end of next week it will be um, daylight before eight o'clock. And by the week after, it will still be, you know, daylight until after 4.30, 5 o'clock. And, you know, we just got to keep going. And I think at the yeah. moment, um, yeah, a little bit of that. It's hard to get up and get moving when it's dark outside and it's wet like this morning and it was cold. But actually, you know, once you get up and get going, a couple of cups of tea, morning prayer. You know, I find, you know, morning prayer is a great practice in the sense of, start your day in God's words and praying with people and like you, you know, doing it online and joining in with conversations and, you know, starting our day with a bit of accountability, I guess, and hearing yeah. what, what does God want to say today. Um, and yeah, we're going to have a, <laughs> we were joking earlier, another few weeks of Paul ahead, because I think we're going to do Corinthians, aren't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> Um, we are um, here, start of 2021, Tuesday Book Club, as I lovingly referred to it in um, Morning Prayer this morning, is back with a new book. Um, and we're going to be having a think about this by Tom Wright, God and the Pandemic. It's a short book, a book written by Tom Wright in the summer of last year, kind of reflecting, I guess, on the pandemic and COVID-19. Um, written I think at the time when we were wondering were we now starting to get through this pandemic it's been quite interesting I know both myself and you read this book when it first came out and now it's quite interesting now coming back to it six months later and being like oh wow we're still in the midst of this and let's see what might God still want to say um, you made the joke I think you were telling me around Tom Wright has two different ways of writing when he says N.T. Wright it means it's going to be heavy and dense and very theological but when he writes under Tom Wright it's a bit more relaxed and easier to understand I'm excited about that for Tuesday Book Club but um, this is a short book that we're yeah. going to do in the next few weeks because we want to when Lent begins we're going to start looking at a Lent book but this gives us something interesting at the start of the year let's get a bit of a Christian Bible perspective on the pandemic that we all face but before we jump into discussing the first bit we always start with a bit of a funny question which is has there been something in the past week and I guess you can have a bit of an extension because we haven't had Tuesday book club for a while so what since we last met has been something that's made you laugh or smile um I suppose there's, there's quite a few things I, I I'm gonna my memory's not as it as it was and so trying to pick something up probably from from even last week uh will probably be difficult so i'm going to pick something this morning and and i think it's probably for both of us okay. uh, something that could be funny but someone made a comment this morning a morning prayer and uh and they just they just said it's so weird that we're still in bed uh, and we, we're basically you're 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 basically in our bedroom uh and they've got it on their big screen they've got a tv and they've got it, we've got you on the big screen in our bedroom. And, and it's just so weird. And because and you know that, and I joke about it on morning prayers, but also on Sunday morning, I said, isn't it great that we can come together uh, from the comfort of your own home? And probably, probably most of you are still in your pajamas. Um, but it's great we can worship like that. Uh, and of course, having comments like that uh, just, just actually brings it home that people are. And then someone else commented, oh, yeah, I am as well. Uh, and so you sort of, the trouble is it creates a, an image uh, that of, of that person in bed. And right. so which you struggle to get out, you need to get it out, you know, you need deliverance from that. Um, uh, and so, so yeah, that, that was, that was, made me chuckle. What, what about you, what about you, Amy? I mean, how do I follow that up? But um, yeah, something that really, um, 
it's been a really tough week like and to just start off with that as we chat about the pandemic like it is it's a tough one I think we were in a meeting together last night along with other people and you were saying really in the last month we've moved from being people who who know about this pandemic but actually we now know people who have been affected personally lost loved ones you know people from our churches and congregations suffering with covid you know for us at St Luke someone in hospital at the moment and actually it, it gets a lot realer in that sense um Something that really made me smile and was a real highlight last week was we have our monthly prayer gathering at St. Luke's on Zoom on Thursday evenings, once a month. And um, it just was a really holy time, like in the sense of there wasn't loads of people there. There was maybe 10 of us or so. And, but it was a chance to, we were praying for, you know, a family that were looking at the real reality that they were about to lose a loved one. Um, and the loved one did pass later that night. Um, we were praying for some members who were unwell and but there was a real sense of actually holding these people together before God and you know it was encouraging to hear people bring prayer points you know one of our children were on the call with their dad and you know they had asked mum works in the hospital and it was just this really lovely moment where he said please pray for my mum and everyone in the NHS and so we did and actually it was just that sense of holding each other together before the Lord and it kind of afterwards I was like wow we covered a lot of heavy ground but it was a really holy ground in that space and so um yeah it just something that made me smile in a sense of we're in this together we will get through this mm -hmm. this is tough but we serve a faithful God who is with us who offers his comfort when it's difficult and you know gives us his peace and I think that's really what um what it, like it just comes home to to land a little bit doesn't it when it's yeah. like wow god is with us this is difficult but we're not on our own and i think that made me smile and kind of have been reflecting on that since you know brilliant no no it's i mean I, some of the some of the words that that i've used particularly in the evening prayers uh, uh particularly as people have had a difficult day some some of them and and, and they've taken the news in as well mm -hmm. is that um uh, hold on to God and hold on to each other and, and I think I, I'm carrying that through I think for 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 a time uh, you know, just that's what we need to that's what we need to do and that's certainly borne out in your in your prayer time uh, as well so yeah it, it is tough and and I suppose one of the questions we ask is that and, and lots of people ask this particularly going through this prolonged uh, mm. pandemic um, is is our view of God, and we some people ask questions, don't they? You know, where where is God in this, and is He interested, and why doesn't He do something, and and all of that. So so this book that that Tom Wright has written, very short book, sort of addresses some of those questions, but also the position of our relationship with God, uh, and and also put into context of uh, God of the Old Testament as well. So so. I'm going to ask a question, Amy. What, what's out of this book? And it's, we've only looked at the two first two chapters, the intro and then uh, uh, and then the Old Testament. Uh, what 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 sort of stood out for you uh, initially? What's your initial response uh, to what Thomas said? Thomas is a good way to set it up because actually that's really where the book starts off by saying we're in the midst of a global pandemic. How are we to respond as Christians? You know, the first chapter is called "Where do we start?" Like these are. And we're all fed up with phrases like this, but unprecedented times, this is a once, you know, um, blah, blah, blah. It's, just, it's a deeply concerning time. It's a time that's been deeply frustrating. But what is our response as Christians? You know, do we kind of just shrug our shoulders? Do we just um, jump into looking for maybe like theological answers? Yeah. Are we questioning, you know, saying, where is God? What is God doing? Where is he in the midst of all of this stuff and actually um, Tom Wright starts by looking at some you know different uh, responses to what that happens you know do we just say let's tough it out you know if this is going to happen it's going to happen or are we people that are like you know what let's just bunker down let's get sorted out you know let's isolate watch Netflix we'll get through this and re-emerge when we can do we go for um, a kind of you know, hyper Christian response where we go, hey, we're made for somewhere else. And this is kind of quoting Tom, right? We're made for somewhere else anyway. Bring it on, you know? Um, 
but actually what does that reveal and you know something that he then goes on to talk about is you might be able to bunker down and self-isolate but what about those who can and actually one of the things we really saw back in the summer when we started to look at the first few months of how the world had responded was actually who was most affected by it how, how can we just say bunker down and watch Netflix to people in refugee camps or to people in slums around the world or to people most affected when we saw the rates that came in of who were the worst affected communities, you know? Um, and so Tom Wright's really looking at, it's easy to ask the why question, but actually the bigger question is what do we do about this? What is happening? What is our response? I don't know, Dave, maybe you want to tag in. Yeah, I, I just want to sort of backtrack a bit on what you said about, um, I remember, if you can remember that far back, reading, <coughs> reading the news, seeing what was happening in China. Uh, oh, that's nowhere near us. Moving into places like Iran. Oh, that's, that's nothing to do with us. That's somewhere else. And then getting into Italy. Oh, well, there's lots of old people in Italy and they're very sociable. Um, and then it really came home when, when we had the first... A case in, in the UK uh, and then it sort of went from there um, and, and Tom Wright opens up with the idea of actually denial 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 and then oh no it's affecting us yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think I think that just speaks to me in a very and, and other things have happened since uh, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, and whatever that's that's called into question the what do we do um, and one of them is, do we just sit idly by uh, and, and, oh, it's happened before, uh, it's happened to other people, so it's not, it doesn't bother us. Uh, we'll just sit silently uh, and, until it all goes away. Mm. Or, and, and you're right, there are people that can't do that. And also, we shouldn't, because we are, we are called to speak out and speak up and step in. Mm. Uh, and Tom Wright doesn't always get into that, but I think that's certainly what I got when, he, when I read the first two pages about you know the idea is that that um uh he opens up doesn't he and we've, we've heard this before you know first they came for the jews but i did nothing because i'm not a jew then they came for socialists but i did nothing because i'm not a socialist then they came for the catholics but i did nothing because i'm a catholic finally they came for me but by then there was no one there to help me so to the what question we do something uh and and, and we don't idly sit by uh, and of course, then the further question is that what what is the what then, and how how does our faith shape what we do, how we react, um, uh, and yeah, so it's um it's a really big, big question, uh, and um, we could spend all day uh, just developing that, but we haven't got all day. Um, but that that really spoke to me, and I've heard that we've all heard that bit at the beginning before. You know, we didn't step in, we didn't. Uh, use our faith, respond uh, in the way maybe we should have, and then, then there's no one left. So yeah, that 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 certainly spoke to me. Um, uh, what else, Amy? We well, on that? that Tom Wright says in terms of navigating the what is our response is we got to wade through a lot of nonsense in the sense of you know it's been such a year of conspiracy theories of bad doctrine of you know of shaping an initial response so whether it's um you know this is all a conspiracy or this is all a hoax or you know um tom wright speaks about the blame game that happens you know we can all think of a tyrant dictator that's been very good in america at you know blaming china and all of this stuff and actually there will be questions to be answered about how this information about this virus was initially spread but actually it's really easy to blame uh, others without maybe looking at ourselves where we, you know, as you were just saying, chose to ignore warnings or only really kicked into practice when, when it then started to affect us. So what does that look like? But also Tom Wright is kind of spelling out different ways that um, conspiracies, maybe self-interest, maybe a kind of um, a rush for maybe like an end times theology or um, a Jesus, Jesus's blood is my COVID vaccine type nonsense that has 
um, circulated and I know I've heard all sorts of it you know I'm so fed up of stupidity on social media media you know COVID's not real COVID's just like a cold um, come and tell that to families that I have seen that have lost loved ones and especially when it's Christians that are posting rubbish like that I'm like where's the sensitivity where's the care you know if that's your view take it somewhere else and maybe read a book like I don't know but how do we as Christians a what that is grounded in the suffering of others and how do we stand with the broken the bereaved the suffering the sick um so i guess the first part of the what is wading through the nonsense of maybe a hyper christian response that looks at end times and sees this just talks about opportunities and we both know there are opportunities between thinking about church differently but starts from actually this is painful and difficult the world is affected by this. So how do we not just get hyper-Christian super quickly? How do we wade through the conspiracy nonsense to a, a, a biblical level-headed response of how we are to respond as Christians? I don't know, do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, I, I, I do want to, because, because I've heard it as well. He says, well, my faith will, it, my faith in God, God will sort it out, I am protected, mm. uh, and so it'll all be okay. Well. Look at the Old Testament. We're going to go on to the Old Testament. Yeah. You know, yes, there were times uh, where where God interceded. You know, when when Joshua went out, when Gideon went out, when the odds were stacked against them, uh, but God was on their side. Mm -hmm. But there's that is outnumbered by so many other things where actually God wasn't uh, there to win a war for them, or people died and they didn't know why, and it's and they were. They were saying, that, as the psalmist says, um, oh, where, where was God in this? And have you forsaken him? And, and we will get onto this in the next bit. And it's actually um, because that's not the way God works. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we just got to get back to a, a, different, a proper understanding uh, of our relationship with God. God's plan, 2911, Jeremiah 2911, yes, to prosper. But it doesn't mean we don't suffer. It doesn't mean we don't die. It doesn't mean that plagues will come. Uh, as, as they do and it's interesting I've been uh, hearing about a bit about Shakespeare and about Samuel Pepys and, and, and people are actually a bit like today being very cavalier um, in, in their approach to the plague and, and, and which is was so deadly uh, in London and um, which you're seeing today as well uh, so so yeah I think you're right Amy we, we've got to get back to a, a proper understanding biblical understanding of god uh, in history and today um and it's not a god who, who will protect us from the from coronavirus absolutely not um we know that there are christians dying of this uh, there are christians dying of all sorts of things um and and the trouble is people still saying it god's going to protect me i'm, I'm going to be fine no um and and, the, and it's dangerous because if you feel that you've got God's protection, you become uh, effectively immune, or as you, as you say, you're um, uh, desensitized to other people's uh, issues. And, and the problem is that, uh, and it's great that Chris Whitty has come out uh, very recently, and I've been saying this for months, is that you have to assume that you've got it. And if you've got it, that, that, that shapes your behavior. And if you love God and if you love each other, then, then you will do the most you can to protect them. So yeah, so it, it's um, yeah. I, I, I'm there are some stupid people out there. There really are, and some stupid Christians, and some dangerous Christians. I think dangerous. Yeah, because people listen. People listen to them. Uh, Christian leaders are actually are listening to them, and that, and and they're and they're and it's not just Christian leaders. It's, it's leaders, and this is the abuse of power. Um, you know, so a couple of my evening prayers I've been, I've been going on about the idea that actually, uh, and it came, it's come out twice actually, you know, we, you know, 1 Corinthians 1, right at the beginning now, who do you follow? You know, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow Cephas. No, you don't follow people, you follow Christ. So we do need to get back to the understanding of God in, in the context today and also in history. We've got to be, we've got to read more. Mm. So, Amy, where are you from here? Yeah. At least listen 
to to different voices you know it's so easy in a kind of echo we talk a lot about echo chambers of social media or if you always just listen to the same place for your news or you know it's really easy to think that everybody thinks the same way and actually how do we open up you know one of the things i was really conscious of doing a couple of years ago on social media was making sure on twitter that i was following people that annoyed me because actually i wanted yeah. to hear different different opinions different things it makes us more rounded you know people who think the absolute opposite of me like my the list of the accounts i follow on twitter doesn't reflect just my political stances or what i would think because actually it's really important we hear other ideas and a lot of when, when we're reading into like conspiracies or you know on a particular on a particular thought tree and if we are just hearing people that always say the same things that we think it makes us stronger and it maybe you know as we, you were just saying makes us not sensitive then to people who are it's easy to you know yeah covid's not real until it affects you but actually if you're listening to other people you it's, it's really you will quickly hear stories of families that have lost loved ones that have lost their jobs that are you know how sensitive are we to that? And, you know, as you were saying, you know, I just feel so strongly around that not just stupid people, but dangerous people who others have trusted and have come off worse for it. And, you know, as Christian leaders, you know, we've been under like a huge burden and responsibility, not just of thinking of, you know, our wants to get buildings back open or to, you know, to, to, a place for the worship of God for God's people, but actually carrying the burden of how do we do this safely? How do we look after not just our health, but the health of other vulnerable people and playing our part? And actually, you know, I've seen some really reckless behavior from church leaders, not, not in opening buildings, but in terms of what's practice. You know, we'll have a prayer meeting and God will protect this prayer meeting. And we gotta, we gotta do our part, don't we, to follow the rules to to be good examples of what it means to render unto God what is God, but render unto Caesar's what is Caesar's, and to play our part actually in the upkeeping of keeping others safe. And yeah, there, there's a whole load of crazy stuff that's been going on, you know. And how do we how do we walk as people of the light in order that others will see who God is through what we do? Um, and that's been a real challenge, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 I mentioned the Old Testament. Uh, and, and, and Tom sort of looks at, okay, okay what, 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 how was God acting in the Old Testament and, and responding to, to, I suppose, the Psalms uh, and also sort of the laments that people have. And one of, one of the things that comes out um, is that there is this suggestion. It says here in uh, Lamentations 5, why have you forgotten us completely? Why have you forsaken us these many days? Uh, and, and I think that that is a question uh, that, that many Christians will ask uh, and, and position themselves and say, and actually, yeah, this does feel like a time where, where God is not present and God is not active. Uh, and, and what's he doing? Uh, and, and what have we done wrong? Um, and, and that that was a that there's a, a lot of those psalms. You know, you're, you're so why are you so far away from me? Uh, you know, what have I done? I have not turned away from you. I've kept all the, uh, the statutes, I've, I've, I've obeyed you, yet I'm suffering. Um, why, why don't you do something about it? Um, uh, and when I, I read this, I'm reminded of, uh, of why I persevered with Celtic evening prayer. Um, and and it's, now, it's not just persevering, because it's so rich, because the expressions of faith uh, in the Celtic evening prayer is a constant reminder that God has always. We may, we may not feel it now, mm. but God keeps his promises and God has done this. And so remember what he's done. And, and when David speaks or in the Psalms, when he says, I remember you, what you did in my youth, uh, and I'm trying to sort of, you know, remember that to get me through this, uh, and you'll do it again. Right. Uh, and I think that's, that's certainly, uh, when, I, when, when Tom wrote that, thinking that's, that's why I'm doing that evening prayer. Uh, to remind people that you may not be feeling this at the moment, but remember, God keeps his promises and he is there. So, yeah, so that, that was my bit. What about you, Amy? 
really interesting because he um tom's making all these <laughs> it finds funny calling him tom as if we are like his pals tom right tom right um kind of makes this point throughout um this testament where there's always been and we've heard it in our like contemporary times too that this is god's punishment because his people have sinned and so like tom right is kind of saying you know, multiple times, as you were saying in the Old Testament, this comes out, you know, whether it's the Israelites wandering in the desert, has God forgotten us? Is it because we've got this wrong? Uh, and Tom Wright looks at the book of Job in particular, because this awful things happen to Job's life. And we've got these kind of three useless people that come along who just tell Job all of their understanding of what happens. Job, this must be because you've done something wrong. And actually, like, the, the, the narrative of Job actually shows that they're wrong. It's not about Job's wrongdoing. Just sometimes in life, awful things happen. And actually the bit that we are, um, Tom Wright also talks about, you know, a time in One Kings where Elijah stays with someone and, and um, the family is affected and the woman straight away thinks it's because she's sinned. It's been exposed by having a holy man in her presence. Um, and that can be a, a, a step that as Christians, people jump to. This is this is God's judgment upon the world. COVID is God's judgment. Whereas actually, Tom Wright's saying it's a misunderstanding of what's going on. You know, um, there's a, we'll get on to it, no doubt. I'm sure Tom Wright will talk about it. But you know, the story in Luke's gospel where the, the Tower of Salem has fallen. And, you know, people are like, what did those people do wrong to receive that? And Jesus is like, it's not a measure of bad things happen like the tower fell because maybe it wasn't built properly or you know due care wasn't taken it's not god's judgment when people die when when bad things happen and actually tom wright's encouraging a response of you know what there's no easy answers he says you know job doesn't have a satisfactory resolution like yes new family members come along but it's not as if they replace the pain in the heart of what had happened um how are we to respond as Christians? Because that was the question. How do we respond when bad things happen? Do we just give up? Do we look at the blame game? Well, this is because of their this or because they said or done that. Or do we actually take a moment to step back and renew lament? God, this is tough. And, you know, Tom does say we need to lament and complain. We also need to state the case, Tom Wright says, but then leave it with God. We don't pretend we're happy clappy. We say, actually, God, this is super tough, but praise you that you are with this, with us in the midst of the storm. I'm trusting you because you're my refuge. You're my protector. You are with me in the storm and you will see us through this. So how do we respond as Christians? We step back, we renew our trust and we hold on for dear life. I don't know. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, Job, I think it's probably one of those those books that is one everyone can actually sort of say I, I know what he's getting at but two sometimes very misinterpreted as well um, because I love the bit at the end where, where Job has lost so much uh, and then right at the end it's this everyone says there's this massive redemption uh, he, he gains it all back and more and and that great I said well no um, yeah, because he's lost, as you say, he's lost, and we 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 sometimes go too far in actually our lament. In the sense, that we want to move quickly through it. Uh, uh, we say we'll get to the. I like the end bit when we're we're Joe. You know, Joe's life sort of Joe's life is given back to him. He hasn't. He's lost so much, um, uh, and we need to hold on to that. That actually, faithful people as we are, and as Joe was, you know, he done. He done nothing to deserve what came to him yeah. even uh, nothing you know he was not unfaithful uh, yet he suffered mm -hmm. and so and and so that tells us that that suffering is part of life mm -hmm. suffering is part of being christian suffering is part of our faith in fact you know our creed uh, that, that that we say what do we know about jesus what does it tell us about jesus what it tells us is he suffered and died. That's it. Um, nothing about his ministry, nothing about his miracles, nothing about his great teaching. No, he suffered and died. So we know very clearly that mm -hmm. suffering is part of life and part of faith. But we also have a model 
and we also have a person and we also know that God mm. is also in our suffering because he suffered too. And I think we, that's another thing that we, we, we tend to forget because uh, it, it's easy for us. that actually Jesus became human. We, you know, this is Christmas, We've just passed it. Um, but, but for us and, and chose to suffer for us. Uh, and maybe we need to hold on to that a bit more. But but it really is tough. You're right, Amy, because we, well, we don't want to suffer. <laughs> um, who, wants to be, who wants to feel pain? Who wants to feel loss? Who wants to feel anguish? Uh, we don't like it. Um, and we do cry out to God, why? We do cry out, where are you? You've forgotten us. He has not forgotten us. Uh, it's just that this is part of life. And that my analogy that I wheel out time and again, and people still don't, don't tell me to shut up yet. Uh, so I'm gonna keep wheeling the analogy out of God is the train driver. We are on the train, on the journey of faith. We get in a tunnel, that's what we're in at the moment, this dark tunnel. Do we get out uh, and try and get the light ourselves or we trust God and hold on to him and trust him that will get us into the light? Uh, and that, that is, it's just, it's just this question of trust. and Going back to right at the beginning when Tom says, how do we respond as Christians? Do we rub our hands as Christian leaders? So while more people are coming to faith because of this, they might be, but that's nothing to revel in. It's just a case of actually more people are turning to God. More people are turning to prayer. We've seen that. Um, and that's what we do to encourage people to do. Hold on to God in these times. He is there um, uh, and he is faithful. Um, um, but 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 it's tough. It really is. But um, yeah, Job's an interesting, an interesting character to, to hold on to. I also think, as you're saying that, Dave, you know, actually, by by us as Christian leaders being real about actually, this is tough, this is hard. This also authentic, and it also I think helps people on that journey towards God. You know, there's nothing worse than when if you're suffering, if you're grieving, if someone's just like, God is good, this is fantastic. Jesus always wins. Those three statements are true, but there's also a need for it. This is tough, but in the storm, God still wins. Do you know, how do we align ourselves as people who share of the gospel in a way that reaches people? So yeah, maybe, maybe um, more people are turning to Jesus as a result of this pandemic, because maybe the church is getting better at identifying with suffering and hardship and standing with people who are struggling. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I always say is because you know there's the well-known phrase God is good all the time, all the time God is good, and I want to say Hallelujah, Amen to that because God is good all the time, but that doesn't mean that life sometimes isn't really rubbish. And actually, how do we hold that tension better of God is always good when life is great? God is always good when I'm in the midst of the struggle. And actually, how do we hold on to as you just said, you know, the promises, the goodness of God? while it's still difficult and one of the things i've really noticed over the last 10 months is people who have chosen to hold on to go deeper whether it's you know morning prayer or prayer meetings or bible study by getting it fixed into that rhythm of i'm coming to online church today regardless people's faith has really exploded because it's their faith that has got them through this pandemic for others maybe they've disconnected they've switched off you know god isn't in this for me well walk that path at your peril do you know what i mean but actually sometimes it's in the storms of life it's in the difficult stuff where we know god's presence in a much more tangible way because it's the only thing that's going to get us through the situation yeah. so god is good even when life is difficult all the time god is good um, yeah you can add that little bit in brackets it's as you as you spoke it it, it it calls to mind um and this all comes down to right at the beginning i think this having a, a proper understanding of who god is and his nature and his character uh, uh and 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 our relationship with him and his relationship with the world um and i'm reminded of a, an interview that stephen fry did who's uh agnostic stroke atheist one of the stephen fry intellectual guy very well spoken isn't he and very well respected uh, and he was asked a question he said if you could speak to god what would you ask him right uh, and and the, and, the, and then he reeled off this idea about you know 
you know, suffering children uh, and the natural disasters and all of that stuff. You know, why? Um, and, and the problem with that is that, that Stephen Fry has created a God from his own image of what he thinks God should be like. Right. And, then he's asked, and then because of all this suffering, he's asked the question of that God that he's made up. Yeah. Um, why is this happening? Whereas, you know, our understanding, as you say, of God is, no, God is in the midst. Um, God is good, but we still, life is still rubbish. Um, but, and that's why, that's why we hold on to God at those times. So, um, yeah, the answer to the answer to those questions is, is no, it's the wrong question. It's the wrong God. Uh, and I, I, I tweeted when this came out, I said, I don't believe in the God that Stephen Fry doesn't believe in either. And, and that, and so it's just going back to a proper understanding, uh, a, a sound, say, because then that will help us, that helps us get through the rubbish when it comes, not if, when it comes. So, yeah. Hey, maybe um, if I'm just to round up some of what we've kind of said, I guess. So the pandemic happens. One thing for us to think about is how as Christians we respond. It's easy to have the why question, but actually how do we move to a what? What is our response? what how in terms of theologically in terms of how we think in terms of how we serve you know and so in um tom Wright first of all turns to the old testament wondering will he find something about this is a sign of god's judgment but actually through the psalms and the prophecies the stories he looks at actually we come to more i guess of a of a conclusion of sometimes bad things happen how will we trust god in the midst of the storm and actually the call in the Old Testament is one to be honest about how this is difficult, to, to lament, to reflect and to cry out to God because he is the one who will see us through. You happy with that as a summary? Of yeah, it? yeah. Um, well done. You've been listening. I've been listening hard to your wisdom, Dave. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and um, in the next, I guess in next week, we're going to have a think about what we learn from the Gospels. Yep. And what that yes. Means. And then, um, so what I'm looking forward to coming back. And Dave, do you want to pray for us? As yeah, we... why not? Let's do that. Let's pray. Lord, we do hold on to uh, the fact that you are good all the time. You are good. But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, bad things don't, don't happen. It doesn't mean that rubbish is in our life. It doesn't mean there isn't suffering. Uh, but you are in the midst of that. Uh, carrying us through, holding on to us as we are holding on to you. We are reminded in the psalm uh, of the laments, yes, but also that we are fearfully and wonderfully made uh, and known by you individually, uh, a good God who cares for uh, those he has made. And so, Lord, we pray as we begin this journey of exploring uh, 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 where your part in this place, your part in the world and your part in our lives through this pandemic, uh, which has impacted the whole world. Uh, there isn't a place, I don't think, that has not been impacted by this, uh, that uh, we are reminded that as we journey through this difficult time, this real struggle uh, in our personal lives, in our communities, in our churches, uh, that uh, we hold on to a God who is good all the time. Uh, uh, we thank you for your faithfulness uh, uh, and we ask that uh, more and more people would know, come to know you uh, and trust that you would bring us through. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Dave. Always good to chat. Guys, always, yes. And uh, yeah, until next time, uh, next, next chapter, Jesus and the Gospels. We look forward to see what... Uh, Tom Wright says about that. Perfect. Have a good day, Dave. Take care. Bye-bye.